Reeves. Good afternoon. We are interrupting Tamron Hall this afternoon for Governor Tate Reeves State of the State Address. The speech is usually delivered in the evening inside the state capitol and with legislators and other officials sitting together shoulder to shoulder. Because of the pandemic this year, the governor is delivering the speech outside the state capitol and with a much smaller audience. Let's listen in. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Hoseman and Speaker Gunn for working with us in these unusual times to make unusual circumstances. I appreciate your work. To the members of the legislature and other public servants who would normally be here with us, I wish that we could all be together today. But we all know that normal has not been in the cards in 2020, nor has it been in the cards so far in 2021. But I know that you will be able to thoughtfully carry out your work even despite these challenges. I'm grateful for your service, and I'm even more grateful for your friendship. I'm very proud to be joined today by my beautiful wife, who has been the steady hand that I have needed during this tumultuous year. Ely, thank you for being a friend. Thank you for being a great mom to our daughters and a true partner in this work. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am here to say that our state is unconquerable. We have taken every hit that can be thrown. We've been tested by every force of nature, disease, and human frailty. It is already a miracle that our state is still standing. But we are not simply standing. We are marching forward. In this year of crisis and confusion, there has been a solid foundation. It is the Mississippi spirit that binds all of us together. This is not a state of people who have cowered in the face of adversity. We've got grit and pride and faith. We know how to overcome our differences and work together. We know how to do hard things. We know how to treat one another. As we saw on Easter Sunday, this is a state of people who won't let a tornado leave the ground before arriving with chainsaws to clear their neighbor's land. As we saw after Zeta, it is a state of people who won't let the waters of a hurricane rush back to the sea before ensuring their neighbor has food and warmth. It is a state of people who step up time and time again and have exceeded all expectations this year. Tennessee Williams was a world-renowned playwright, a son of Lowndes County, Mississippi. He once wrote, the violets in the mountains have broken the rocks. What he meant was simply that decency, kindness, empathy, and goodness always win, even when facing hardened opposition. That has happened here in our state, in our time. We've seen courage and compassion beat the forces of chaos and destruction here at home. The victory isn't final, but we can see it every single day. That victory is visible in the long hours of nurses, teachers, and first responders. It is visible in the lives saved by ordinary heroes administering care. Physical, emotional, and spiritual on a daily basis in our state. It is because of those people that Mississippi was able to move forward when the rest of the world came to a halt. In Mississippi, we never stopped working. We never shut down farms and we never shut down factories. What we did slow down, we opened up as quickly and as widely as we possibly could. 
We've been cautious, never panicked. We've been safe, but not stubborn. Life cannot be lived in perpetual idleness and isolation. We realize that, and we've adapted our plans throughout the year, responding swiftly when the spread is most severe and pulling back whenever possible. And that has made a tremendous difference. Despite the once in a century pandemic, Mississippi's economy actually grew year over year. Think about that. We were the third best state in the country for job recovery. That's not just because of an open economy. It's because Mississippians don't want welfare, they want to work. They recognize the pride and dignity that comes with it, and they've been eager to return whenever given the opportunity. It is also why, as we look forward, we cannot be content with where we are. We can never say simply, that's good enough. I don't want to compete with the Mississippi of the last 50 years. I don't want to compete with Mississippi of the last decade. I don't even want to compete with Mississippi of last year. I want to compete with the best of the best. Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, and Texas. Because I know not only can we compete, I know we can win. We can get in the ring with anybody and we can leave with more jobs and higher wages. Mississippians can bring more skill and dedication to any project than anyone else anywhere in the world. Why? Because we work harder than anyone anywhere in the world. Why shouldn't we get the best jobs, the best expansions, and the best headquarters? I believe we can. And as Mississippi's own, the great Dizzy Dean once said, if you can do it, it ain't bragging. Now, this is a time of global upheaval and chaos. And it is in those times that fortunes are made. We need to make Mississippi's fortune today. This is the moment in our history to do it. We've chosen a new banner. We've improved our educational outcomes. And we've shown to the world that we're open for business. Now, we need to go out and win high paying jobs for the people of our state. I believe that in order to fully capture the potential of this historic moment, we must think big. We need a bold move. This is the time for an action that will turn heads all across the country and get money and people flowing in. And I believe that move is the elimination of the income tax. It is a reward for our hard workers and an incentive for others to invest here, to grow here, and yes, an incentive for them to live here. We can transform our economy. Now, we can do it in a smart way, recognizing that it will take a few years to phase it out. But we can change a generation of lives here by attracting the jobs and the wages we deserve. I am ready and committed to work with legislators on this, and I know that there is an appetite for this type of boldness. Now, I also know that there are still many who say that we can't lower taxes because it puts new government spending at risk. And I understand that it is often good politics to act like something from the government is a gift. In fact, the far left has been playing that tune for generations. But we have to be clear. The government doesn't have anything that it does not first take from a taxpayer. And the people of our state understand this. We have to respect the workers of Mississippi enough to recognize when we can show restraint 
and stop taking from them. Allow them to spend their money that they make, and I believe it will grow our economy beyond belief. I also believe we need to sharpen one particular tool to get our economy rolling, our state's workforce development. We don't need Mississippians to be stuck in low-paying jobs. We want them to embark on careers with good pay and freedom. The best way to accomplish that is to help lift young Mississippians up, give them access to training that puts them in a position to succeed. Now last year, the legislature made great progress in this effort, and I am thankful for you having done so. Now, I'm calling on the legislature to continue their wise investments in this mission. It is essential. It is how we will succeed. It is how we will lift people out of poverty and into proud work. I know they share that goal. That mission really begins, of course, years sooner with a solid educational foundation. Mississippi has made incredible strides. In fact, number one in the nation in improvements. Now, we need to, once again, set our sights even higher. We've made great progress, but it's not good enough because I believe we can do even better. This year, in spite of tremendous pressure, we recognized that education is essential. It cannot be accomplished at scale without the incredible efforts of in-person educators. Now, it seems obvious in hindsight, but there were tremendous headwinds. I know that we made the right decision to open our schools and allow our children and parents access to a true education. We need to keep working. We need to keep fighting for every child to have access to the education that they deserve. We need to ensure that parents have the choice to save their child from a district that lets them down. And we need to reward our teachers for the exceptional work that they do. I support a teacher pay raise. I know the Senate has already passed the Lieutenant Governor's plan. And I know that Speaker Gunn and the House have always been supportive of raises for our teachers. I'll be eager to sign any raise that the legislature can send me. Our teachers have earned it. It's the right way to invest. Now, there's a lot more policy and politics to be hashed out in the coming year. Some of it is even important. But I know the people of Mississippi have heard a lot from me over the last year. So I want to keep this address on point. I want the people of Mississippi to know my focus for the weeks and months and year ahead. First, we need to crush this virus and get back to our way of life. The virus is still here and it cannot be solved by ignoring it. We have to defeat it because Mississippians are done. We're done burying loved ones who were lost to this virus. We're done with overwhelmed hospitals. We're done with the talk of lockdowns and shutdowns. We're ready for community again. We want our schools to flourish with children learning and playing carefree. We want businesses thriving with crowds of customers joined together. We want to let down the constant guard and be joyful together. We want to be unafraid of fellowship with our friends and our neighbors. It is one thing to eliminate government restrictions. Most of those went away back in the summer. It is another to be truly free from fear and to have no more anxiety when we come together. It will be a great day when we can gather in stadiums, churches, restaurants and bars, shoulder to shoulder, without the quiet fear of COVID. When you can celebrate with strangers after a touchdown, 
sing loudly at a concert, not muffled by a mask, and just live life. Just live life without fear. True, unadulterated camaraderie. That day is coming. And it's coming sooner than we think. But there is one more hurdle to that. And it is the rapid distribution of the coronavirus vaccine. I want you to know, I reject the false narrative that is being pushed by some, which says this is our new normal. That even after vaccination, we need to just continue to hide away and live in perpetual isolation. That's just wrong. This is it. This is our moment. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel, and Mississippi is sprinting towards it. I promise that we will smash every roadblock. We will get this done as quickly as we possibly can and allow people to protect themselves from this virus. It is my most immediate priority, and I assure you it has my full attention. I also have a personal goal. It's, no, it's one that I know I will fall short of from time to time, but I'm still aiming at it daily. It is to cultivate empathy. It's been in short supply in this world for some time now. That's been on display across our nation, too. And too often, that leads us to see one another as enemies. It leads to corrosion in trust. We, as a people, cannot allow cruelty to win. We must rise above. We'll always have spirited debate and disagreement. But I firmly believe that you can fight for what you believe in while honoring the man or woman on the other side. Above all, we have to understand that every Mississippian, every American is on the same team. We all want to be treated with grace. And we're all created in the image of a perfect God. So, my goal is to act like it. For me, that means looking out for those who need extra help. It means being honest with people, admitting what I don't know, and working to be better. It means diligently working to make Mississippi an even more welcoming, prosperous state. I'm incredibly lucky that I'm not in it alone. None of us are. We're surrounded by a legion of fellow Mississippians, people who care about you, people who want you to succeed because they know we will all rise together. If we can just harness that, we can accomplish anything. I know that our state has what it takes to be exceptional. And I know that with God's continued providence and our unconquerable spirit, together we can get there. May God bless you, and may God bless the state of Mississippi. Thank you.